Hi, I'm Daniel Andrews, owner and creator of AndrewsFootball.com. It's Friday night, and hey, I'm here to talk about football. Of course, the big story is uh, Bob Kraft. He's the owner of the New England Patriots. He was, uh, the, the, the exact charge here is uh, soliciting a prostitute. Um, there's slang for it, but I'm going to keep this very friendly here. Uh, basically, uh, it's very similar to uh, Bob Ursay. Now, he uh, was arrested in 2014. Uh, he was suspended for six games because uh, owners are subject to the personal policy, uh, personal conduct policy. So it, it's a little different, but basically he's going to not be able to go, I'm, I'm going to say four to six games. Uh, because it is the Patriots, uh, you got the deflate gate, the spy gate. Uh, you have a, they're a higher profile team than the Colts, obviously, a high, higher profile owner. Um, I, I think the Patriots are going to lose the draft pick, but it's not going to be this year. I think it'll be next year. Uh, now, keep in mind, Bob Kraft's a brilliant man, a very smart man. They're going to spin this round, possibly even use this as motivation. Who knows? I'm still uh, uh, bitter about that bet against us. I thought that was stupid. This this could be even stupider, but it'll be it'll be interesting. You'll be uh, you know fans will have signs up. Uh, social media will explode. Uh, for it, but ultimately this will not be an issue. He'll get community service, a slap on a wrist fine, and and life will go on. Uh, but the main thing, I did want to touch base on that, how it affect the Patriots, it actually won't. However, I, I just want to touch base on this, and I'll touch base on this later on down the road, uh, closer to the start of regular season, is that Patriots will start off slow. They start off slow every year. And, and there'll be this some sports media will try, oh, well, the owner and everything's falling apart. No, it's not falling apart. Patriots start slow. Get used to it. Take advantage of it if you're putting action out early in the season against the Patriots. Don't do it late in the season, middle of the season. Do it early in the season. Anyway, um, I don't think it's going to be an issue, but I did want to touch base upon that. But the number one thing I wanted to talk about is uh, the NFL Combine, which is uh, coming up next week. I absolutely love the NFL Draft. If you draft well, uh, then, then your team does well. And the big misconception about the draft is that you got to hit the middle rounds. Uh, three through five are critical, but uh, Super Bowl MVP, Julian Edelman, sixth round pick. Uh, for the Chiefs, Tyreek Hill, fifth round pick. So it, it's really key in the middle rounds, but the round one is where you see all the mocks. Uh, there'll be some action you can put down if you're, if you're into that sort of thing. I'm going to release my mock after the combine, which is going to go on next week. So uh, it's big. Now, Here's the thing. I'm, I'm going to touch base on a few things. I'm not going to try to drag this out too long, but uh, last year, Maurice Hurst, this is a first-round player. I even saw a mock draft. He was the fourth overall player. He had a hard irregularity. Uh, so what happened is, is that he wasn't allowed to participate in any of the drills. Then he was cleared, but it spooked teams. Uh, ended up going in, in the fifth round. Uh, Lael Collins, for those of you who don't remember, is, I think it was about four years ago, uh, first-round player. Universally across the board was implicated in a murder investigation, even though he wasn't uh, a person of interest. The police called him in, uh, had to work with the authorities. I don't know all the details, but he went off the, the board completely, ended up being an undrafted free agent. Cowboys picked him up. He's been a starter. Not not really a first-round talent, but but he's starter in the NFL, an undrafted free agent. That's not bad, but... Um, yeah, uh, you also had Reuben Foster two years ago, a universal top five pick. Then he had the infamous, do you know who I am? Well, that was the rumor, but they sent him home, ended up being uh, the 31st pick in the draft. Two years ago, Tease Tabor, uh, universally thought to be number one corner, top 10 pick, ran a slow time in the 40. Now, that was compounded by, blow, by, by destroying his uh, time at the 40 because it's very rare that you run slower at your pro day than you do at the combine, but that happened to him, so he ended up being the second round. The combine's important. You have to ace the combine. It, 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 there's so many stories. I could talk for hours on players that improved or, or uh, decreased their value, depending just purely on the combine, but the combine's extremely, extremely important. Uh, how you behave, how you answer questions is just important as the physical attributes. The 40 yard dash is the big one. Bench press is something a lot of people want to look at, but really it's a shuttle run and um, your change of direction for a lot of your uh, skill position players. Now, I got my eye on four players. 
Uh, as soon as the combine's over and done with, I'm going to eyeball these four first. And, and number one is Josh Allen. Now, Nick Bosa is going to ace the combine. Josh Allen and Nick Bosa are on two separate ends of the spectrum. Nick Bosa is part of the new age where if, if you're going to be a top five, top ten player, you kind of shut it down. You don't play in a, a bowl game unless it's a national championship. You, you know, he had a minor injury, decided, you know what, I'm a top five pick. I'm just going to prepare for the NFL. That's my whole goal. Uh, Josh Allen was a guy who was going to be a second or third round pick, went back to school, uh, looked like he was going to be anywhere from a five to 15 pick. Played in a bowl game against Penn State. I watched it. He looked like a man among boys. Had three sacks. Now people are talking about him possibly going number one overall. Josh Allen's key to the whole draft. If Josh Allen goes to the combine and on a scale of one to ten, if he's eight or better, he could go number one. And then that makes the draft very, very interesting because Arizona has, has the number one pick in the draft. Josh Allen if he does well, is actually a better fit than Nick Bosa. But the thing with Josh Allen, I'm hearing, is he 6'5", is he 6'7"? I've heard 230, I've heard 260. Because if he's 6'7", 260, and he looks like a stud, he can play a 3-4, he can play a 4-3. Now, most teams are using kind of hybrid nickel, 3-4, 4-3 is not as important as it used to be. But still, it's, it's important because Arizona's going to a 3-4. Uh, Josh Allen on the opposite side of Chandler Jones makes perfect sense. Uh, Nick Bosa, a classic 4-3 defensive end, really doesn't fit into that scheme. And then there's two different thoughts on that. You know, do you, do you just add talented players and, and build the scheme around players, or do you add your scheme, put the players that best fit the system? I think you pick the players that best fit your system. That's my humble opinion. Uh, but if Josh Allen blows up the combine, it makes everything very confusing because – Whoever Arizona picks at number one, will San Francisco do at number two? They, uh, two years ago, they traded down with Chicago, and at first everybody thought it was a great deal because they got Solomon Thomas and Reuben Foster. Reuben Foster, of course, no longer with the team. Solomon Thomas, not even uh, a full-time starter. The Bears, who everybody ripped apart, they have a Pro Bowl quarterback. So I don't know if they, uh, they want to take the chance of trading down again, especially if, if – uh, Josh Allen looks really good. You can get Nick Bosa. Nick Bosa looks just as good as his brother, uh, Joey Bosa. However, both of them have had injury concerns, so that's another red flag. But Nick Bosa will ace the combine. If Josh Allen aces the combine, everything's up for grabs because you're going to have teams that may want to trade up. San Francisco may want to trade down. It, it's just going to be a really fun draft. But, you know, there may be a team wanting to trade up for a quarterback, Speaking of quarterbacks, uh, the quarterback, this is my number two player who I'm going to look out for, is Daniel Jones. He, he's my draft crush as quarterback. I got to watch his uh, bowl game against Temple, and he looked awesome. Uh, the same uh, college coach that worked with both Peyton and Eli Manning worked with this kid. Uh, this kid's your classic quarterback. He's tall. He's athletic. He's big. Uh, the only thing that, that's going to be interesting with him is that is you have the arm strength. So I watched a little bit of film, and I don't watch as much college as I would like to. Now, keep in mind, I'm a chief season ticket holder, so I've been spoiled. I've been watching Patrick Mahomes all year. Nobody's confusing Daniel Jones with, with Patrick Mahomes, okay? Arm strength, but but has he got a noodle arm? Is he, is he a guy who does below average arm strength? Because that knocks him way down. But if he looks like he has a good enough arm, he's definitely quarterback number one. He went to Duke. He's going to ace the combine. The only question is the arm. And quarterbacks always get uh, some extra attention. They're always the star of the combine. But if this guy shows enough arm strength, he's going to be quarterback number one. And he could go anywhere from San Francisco want to trade out of, out of the second pick. Did Oakland Raiders like him enough? Remember, he was MVP of the Senior Bowl. Who coached him? John Gruden. Does John Gruden like him enough that they want to move on from Derek Carr? These are all interesting questions that are going to be answered. But Daniel Jones does enough with his arm, he's going to ace everything else. He's going to be quarterback number one. He's going to be a top 10 pick. So that's something that I'm really paying attention to in this. And the next two players I'm really going to keep an eye out on are both wide receivers. Um, Nikhil Harry, before the season started, almost some people thought he could have been number one overall. And I used to joke around with people on social media. It's like, how much is Herm going to kill you? Herm Edwards took over. 
uh, as head coach at Arizona State. For those of you that are Chiefs fans like myself, uh, Herman offense, is, uh, and, and, and his numbers did take a nosedive, but he did have some highlight reel uh, type material and return punts. He's about 6'4", 210, 215, R runs well, excellent hands, uh, also returns punts, so he's got some, some run after the catch ability, which is really, really important. Uh, the question with him is that there was times before the draft, or I'm sorry, before the season, he was talk, talked about being a top five player, maybe number one overall. Now I'm seeing mock drafts where he's all the way in the third round, late first. His key is the 40 yard dash. If he runs un, if he runs around a low four fives, under four five five, he's top ten. If he runs un, I mean, if he runs under a four five, he's top ten. If he runs four five five, probably top fifteen. Um, but he has the thing that's uh, really kind of hurting him is that he had one of his, well, not teammate, but Jalen Strong uh, also went to Arizona State. Very similar type of build, very similar type career. He's on his third team, just got signed as a free agent uh, from Cleveland. He's like, it's like his fourth year in the league. A lot of people thought, like myself, that he was a first round player. I really liked him coming out of college. Reminds me a little bit of this kid. This Now, keep in mind, Nikhil Harry's a better prospect. But if Nikhil Harry runs under a 4-6, people are going to see the similarities. Here's a guy who could have been the number one pick overall in drafts, could go as low as the third. I think third round would be his floor unless uh, an injury happens or uh, something like resource is discovered in the draft uh, so or in the combine. So it's going to be very interesting. But he's a guy who I'm definitely going to zero in on. Does he look fluid? Excuse me. Does he look fluid? How fast is he? Um, I, he's going to catch everything. Uh, it, it, our team's going to like talking to him because this is a guy I really, really think could could not could contend for rookie of the year. This is a guy who definitely has potential to be a wide receiver number one in this league. Uh, the other wide receiver I'm going to keep an eye out on is uh, David Stills. Uh, for those of you who don't know the story, this is the kid that Lane Kiffin, when he was head coach at USC, offered this kid a scholarship in the seventh grade. Um, he went from that to uh, being being a being a quarterback in the seventh grade, getting a scholarship at USC, to being a wide receiver. Now this guy averaged over a touchdown a game, which is extremely rare, even in the past happy uh, Big Twelve. It's still extremely rare. Uh, but this guy wanted to be a quarterback, didn't work out. Now he's a wide receiver. He's six four, about two oh five. Uh, it's going to be interesting because. Uh, how fast is he going? All the same questions you're asking about Nikhil Harry and asked about David Stills. David Stills, not the same athlete. Uh, I've seen him almost universally. I've seen him going in the fourth round, but he's a guy, if he runs faster than people think, uh, I think teams are going to love talking to this kid. The production's there. Um, I heard that he didn't have a lot of separation. There's questions about his speed. Of course, West Virginia has that crazy wide open offense. They throw the ball everywhere. Um, it's going to be really, really interesting to see how he does. He's a guy I'm going to keep an eye out on because he's a guy who I think, I don't think he's ever going to be, he could be a wide receiver number one. He's not going to be a dominant wide receiver, but he's going to be a very good receiver. Uh, he's going to go to a team and he's really going to help out. Uh, for those of you that are fantasy football junkies, he's going to be a late pick that you may want to keep an eye out on. So uh, those are my four players that I'm going to keep track of. They're the first four players I'm going to look at as soon as the combine's over. Then I'm going to have my mock draft released. Then I'm going to break down every single team. Uh, I'm going to do it by division. I'm going to have all these videos out before the draft. Plus I'll have, some ready, I'll have some action tips for you for those of you that are going to put some action down in Vegas. So Thank you very much for watching my video. All your wildest dreams are going to come true. And if you haven't already, there's this button right here. See that button? It's right there. Bam! Hit that button. Become one of the greatest people on planet Earth. And until next time.